What would happen to us and our planet if it became as big as the sun? The diameter of the Earth is 8,000 miles. Crossing it is like driving back and forth across the USA three times. That doesn't sound like much, right? Well, how about repeating this journey 305 more times? Just imagine the gas expenses. This is the diameter of the sun, about 865,000 miles. Compared to our Earth, the sun is unimaginably huge. So what will happen to us if we catch up with it? There are four possible scenarios, depending on what we mean when we say the size of the sun. Scenario 1. The Earth becomes as large as the sun, but its mass remains the same. A colossal planet with the mass of a teeny tiny Earth. First, say bye-bye to gravity. The more massive the planet, the stronger its gravity is, and vice versa. Such a lightweight planet simply wouldn't be able to attract anything to itself. Gravity creates all the heavy substances. Everything, from pebbles to entire continents, is held thanks to it. I believe you've already guessed what would happen without it. We'd all turn into dust particles. Yes, the Earth simply becomes a dust cloud. Oh, and to add fuel to the fire, the gravities of other planets stretch us to the sides, leaving no chance to collect our planet back together again. This scenario doesn't look very good, does it? By the way, even if the Earth somehow remained a planet, life couldn't have originated on it in these conditions. There would have been a considerable distance between the center of the Earth and its surface. And remember, the planet's mass is minimal, so no gravity. It just wouldn't be able to hold the atmosphere. And without the atmosphere, living organisms cannot develop. Not like it would have mattered. The Earth now is a cloud anyway. So now this cloud, weighing about 10 times heavier than Jupiter, is gathering in space. As a result, it collapses and turns into a star. Say hi to the new sun. Scenario 2. This works both as a separate scenario and as a result of the previous one. The Earth becomes as large as the sun and gets its mass. Now we have two suns. We become a so-called binary star system. You know what that means. It's time to destroy our entire solar system. Imagine having two centers of mass in one system. The planet's orbits become unstable, perturbed by such a sudden change. Once they get closer to our X-Earth, they collapse immediately, either from tidal forces or the X-Earth's impact. Yes, even gas giants. Looking at you, Jupiter. Do you know which one survives and finally gets its revenge on us? Pluto. It would probably be the last remaining X planet in the entire system. It's too far away to notice any changes, except for an increase in the mass of the center of the system. So Pluto's orbit comes closer to our two star system, and that's it. The Earth and the Sun would have to accept that Pluto would be their only friend now. The protoplanetary disk that formed our system billions of years ago doesn't exist anymore. So, no more planets can be created in our system. That's all well and good, but what about the Earth itself? What would life be like? Let's see. The nights and days now last longer because of the increase in the Earth's rotation time. There is probably a significant temperature drop in the North and South Poles. Even on our current small planet, they get sunlight scarcely. So, if the Earth's size increased, the area of the poles receiving sunlight would decrease even more. On a positive note, there's a lot more space now. No more overpopulation. The planet's size is so huge that it would take you years to get from one point to another. Yeah, if you think about it, we'd probably be very lonely there. But hey, who knows? Maybe rockets would become our primary means of transportation. Yeah, that would have been cool. There are many vast uncharted areas that no human ever saw or visited. We also wouldn't know about the existence of many different civilizations and tribes. Centuries pass and many of us go away without ever meeting other people or learning about them. 
and that's if we can walk at all. Our bones cannot support our weight with such a considerable gravity, and our hearts have to work twice as hard to keep us alive. The birds can't fly anymore. Nothing can, precisely. All the existing trees fall down, and the new ones grow very close to the earth, like grass. Talking about the trees, how is our ecosystem doing? Well, not good. If we don't appreciate the environment on our small earth right now, imagine what would happen if we had such a massive space at our disposal. I even assume that our tons of garbage would have overpowered even those endless supplies of trees and clean water that we would have in our new large home. Our machines and robots have to be huge to do at least something now. That's because even ordinary farms now are the size of the U.S. states. I also assume that it would be much darker than we're used to. The Earth is so small now. Imagine what would happen when our planet becomes the size of the sun itself. Less sunlight means that we'd probably need an artificial sun. Also, the temperature differences on the planet's surface would be huge. If you're surprised, you probably underestimated the size of the sun. It's almost 110 times larger than the Earth. Our new Earth's equator equals our current Earth's 35 equators. Oh, and remember Pluto? Well, it's our only moon now. The first one would have probably crashed into us a long time ago, making us share the fate of the dinosaurs. In that case, all the water would likely evaporate from our planet. Anyway, there are thousands of bad possibilities, but let's just move on and focus on something good. Scenario 3 Same thing, but the Earth retains its density. Now this one is interesting. We're no longer a planet. We're a star now. In fact, we became even more massive than the Sun. Our planet now has a 3.9 solar mass because we need to balance our low density somehow. In short, it would be almost the same as in Scenario 2, but with more interesting long-term consequences. Since our Earth became four times as massive as the Sun, it would have burned its fuel quicker. Then it would evolve, and depending on the mass of its core, it either becomes a supernova or just blows off its outer layers to form a planetary nebula. If it goes supernova, the sun that was so close to us blasts. And now, there is just our ex-Earth, a lonely ball with a teeny tiny diameter of 12.5 miles. We're a neutron star. That is, a star made of degenerate neutron matter. That thing is ultra dense and spins very quickly, so you'd better stay away from it. If the Earth becomes a nebula, the sun collects all the dust and adds it to its mass. Now we have a slightly more massive sun and a white dwarf. The time passes, and Grandpa Sun lives out his life. It becomes a red giant after depleting the hydrogen in its core. It starts expanding and leaves its material, mostly hydrogen, on the white dwarf. That's us. When the matter reaches high enough temperatures and pressures, nuclear fusion happens. We become a nova. Yay, we're a star again. A lonely one, but a star nevertheless. So what happens next? You see, a star is a battle of opposing forces. One of them is gravity, which tries in every possible way to compress the lead into a small ball as much as possible. The second is a pile of fuel in the star's core, which, while burning, forms tons of energy and substantial hot temperatures. As long as these forces are in balance, the star lives. But when the star's fuel runs out, the star cools down. The pressure inside it drops. This means gravity has won. It squeezes the star with all its might. And as a result, the star goes, hooray! In just 15 seconds, the brightest light you've ever seen in your life flashes. And our ex-Earth goes supernova, leaving a stunning nebula behind. Anyway, don't worry. It's actually impossible for a rocky planet to be the size of the sun. Only other stars can be that large. But wait, why is our Earth so small while the other planets are enormous? Do they just keep growing or do they stop at some point? The more mass you add, 
the more compression you get. As planets become more massive, the gravitational compression increases. They stop growing when their mass reaches roughly 1.7 times that of Jupiter, or 540 masses of the Earth. After that, adding more mass to a planet will make it smaller, because the compression becomes stronger. In other words, our little thought experiment is impossible. Imagine a being so powerful it can suck in entire galaxies, so mysterious it's invisible to the naked eye, and so impressive it bends the very fabric of space and time to its will. Yes, meet my mother. Nah, just kidding. Actually, meet the ultimate superhero of the universe, the black hole star. What is it and how does it work? Well, let's find out. The universe is full of marvels, and the black hole star is one of the most impressive ones. It's a supermassive force that can bend the laws of physics and a true enigma for scientists to unravel. No wonder science fiction writers find them so captivating. A black hole star, also known as a quasi-star, is a hypothetical type of extremely massive and luminous star that may have existed early in the history of the galaxy. They're predicted to be as luminous as a small galaxy. But unlike modern stars, they weren't powered by nuclear fusion in their cores. A quasi-star's energy would come from material falling into a black hole at its core. And yes, just like a normal black hole, these stars have the power to suck in anything and everything that gets too close, including stars, dust, and even entire galaxies. But how is it possible that the star is born from a black hole? And what's more, how do they continue to coexist together? Well, first let's discuss how black holes are born in general. It all starts with a supermassive star, one that is at least a few times more massive than our own sun. This giant of a star burns bright and hot, shining with the light of a million suns. But eventually, it runs out of fuel and its fate is sealed. As its lifespan comes to an end, it makes one final massive boom. A blast so powerful it can outshine an entire galaxy. This blast is called supernova. During this boom, the outer layers of the star fly away, while the core gets squished together by its own gravity. If the squished core is heavy enough, it can keep squishing until it becomes a black hole. And just like that, a black hole is born. Don't even try to put diapers on this thing. Now, this cosmic monster baby can continue to grow by swallowing up anything that comes too close, including stars, dust, and even entire galaxies. This is basically what's happening now in our universe with supermassive stars. But what about quasi-stars? The formation of a quasi-star could only happen early in the development of the universe, before hydrogen and helium were contaminated by heavier elements. And because of that, quasi-stars have one important feature. They are gigantic, so enormous, that it's literally impossible to imagine. They may have been dwarfing even the largest known modern stars, like V.Y. Canis Majoris and Stevenson 218. No wonder they're so scary. They were born from protostars, one of the first stars in the universe. The great-great-grandfathers of, you know, everything. So now, imagine a protostar so massive that its core collapses into a black hole, just like we described before. But the key difference is that in a regular supernova, the outer layers of the star are blown away by the energy released during the boom. Meanwhile, in a quasi-star, these outer layers are massive enough to absorb the energy without being blown away. What do we get in the end? A star with a black hole in its core that weighs from 1,000 to 10,000 solar masses. This quasi-star is about 14,000 times bigger than our Sun, which makes them bigger than any star we know today. These celestial titans have some pretty crazy properties. Once a black hole is formed at the center of a giant protostar, it starts to give off a ton of energy. This energy helps to balance out the force of gravity, making it kind of a giant fusion-based star. They would be so bright that each one would look like a small galaxy. Quasi-stars would have a pretty short lifespan, around 7 million years. Just for comparison, our Sun is about 4.5 billion years old and it's only halfway through its lifetime. But either way, during this short period, the black hole at the center would grow to be about a 1,000 to 10,000 times the size of our Sun. 
quasi-stars are also thought to be super hot, with temperatures reaching over 17,500 degrees. But as a quasi-star gets older, it starts to cool down, and its outer layers become see-through. Eventually, it cools down to a temperature of 6,740 degrees. And at that point, it's curtains for the quasi-star. It can't survive at that temperature, so it just dissipates, leaving behind an intermediate mass black hole. Unfortunately, right now, there's no observational evidence for the existence of quasi-stars. This is because they're thought to have only existed a very, very long time ago. They may have been very massive Population 3 stars, which are extremely rare and difficult to detect. It's also very unlikely that any of them would still exist today because of their super short lifespan – only 7 million years. So why do scientists believe that quasi-stars could have existed? Because they're looking for ways to explain how supermassive black holes formed so early in the history of the universe. They're found at the center of most galaxies. But how could these monsters have formed so quickly? After all, it takes a really long time for small black holes to grow into supermassive ones. This is where the idea of quasi-stars come in. These stars aren't just destructive forces of nature. They're like the black belts in the martial art of gravity. They can bend and twist anything to its will. That's why these stars, if they really existed, had to play a crucial role in the evolution of galaxies. They must have been instrumental in shaping the universe as we know it. So those intermediate-sized black holes that they left behind could eventually turn into supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies. But we're still yet to solve this cosmic mystery. Detection and study of black hole stars is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Only instead of a needle, it's an invisible and mysterious object. And instead of a haystack, it's the vast expanse of space. But with the help of some pretty cool technology and a lot of brain power, scientists are getting closer to uncovering the secrets of these celestial giants. Here are some things that can help us in this research. First of all, gravitational waves. They're like ripples in the fabric of space-time, caused by the movement of massive objects. Albert Einstein predicted them way back in the 20th century, but they were finally detected only in 2015. We caught them by observing the collision of two black holes. This discovery confirmed that black holes can merge and that they're a powerful source of gravitational waves. Scientists think that by studying these waves, they can learn more about how black holes form and grow. We can also try to detect quasi-stars by observing the effects of their gravity on nearby objects. It's like trying to spot a criminal by their fingerprints. For example, if a black hole is located near a star, scientists can observe the star's light being distorted as it's pulled toward the black hole. And of course, we can use our technologies, such as X-ray, infrared, and radio telescopes. This allows us to study black holes in various ways and at different stages of their lives. In other words, scientists are working hard to uncover the secrets of these celestial giants. We develop new telescopes, search for primordial black holes, and try to understand the connection between black hole stars and dark matter. And we're making some pretty incredible discoveries, just like with gravitational waves. All these things will bring us closer to uncovering the secrets of quasi-stars. And when we find out the truth about them, it will become a new page in our scientific history. A powerful burst of gamma radiation lasted a mere half-second, but it released an enormous amount of energy. It was more than our sun would produce in 10 billion years. This brief flash lit up the whole sky. Afterward, a much softer and more long-lasting glow replaced it. Astronomers examined the phenomenon with X-ray, radio, optical, and infrared waves. It turned out that people had finally seen a newborn magnetar for the first time ever. It was likely formed after two neutron stars had merged. It resulted in a kilonova, one of the brightest and largest stellar blasts. Its light finally reached our planet on May 22, 2020. Imagine a massive star, at least five times the mass of our sun, reaching the end of its life. It might be because it's run out of its nuclear fuel. If it happens, the star starts to cool off. The pressure inside drops, and the gravity starts to squeeze inward. And then, 
more than a million times the mass of our planet, collapses within 15 seconds. It happens so fast that an enormous shock wave causes the outer part of the star to blow up. It produces a blinding burst of light. This powerful blast is called a supernova. What's left behind is an incredibly dense core with a huge cloud of hot gas, called a nebula, expanding around it. If the star has been massive enough, more than 10 times the size of the sun, it's likely to turn into a black hole. If not, it turns into a neutron star. It's basically a giant nucleus, the central part of an atom. These stars are mostly made up of neutrons and are rarely larger than 20 miles across. For comparison, our sun is almost 865,000 miles across, which is 109 Earths put side by side. But don't let this relatively tiny size fool you. Any neutron star is at least one and a half times heavier than our sun and has an intense magnetic field. If you scooped just a teaspoon of this star's insides, this matter would weigh more than a billion tons. It's so dense that it makes neutron stars some of the most extreme objects people know about. The next stop is the black hole itself. When two neutron stars merge, they most often create a new, much heavier one. Within milliseconds, or even less, this star collapses into a black hole. But the astronomers who examined the flash of light recorded in March think there might be another outcome. They're almost sure they saw something never observed before the birth of a magnetar. That's a rare form of a neutron star with an ultra-strong magnetic field. It's 1,000 trillion times stronger than our planets. This field is also so powerful, it heats the star's surface up to 18 million degrees Fahrenheit. To put it simply, magnetars are the most powerful magnets in the universe. Their magnetic fields can seriously mess with the neighborhood. Atoms, unlucky enough to get close to such a star, get stretched into pencil-thin lines. If you somehow found yourself several hundred miles away from a magnetar, it would end badly for you. The magnetic field would first disrupt your bioelectricity. It means that your nerve impulses wouldn't work anymore. Even your molecules would change under the influence of the star's field. In the end, you'd pretty much vanish. If a magnetar flew within 100,000 miles from our planet, it would wipe out all the data on every single credit card in the world.